It just seems like a great day to talk about some Mario. Maybe it has to do with the new Super Mario Bros. movie in theaters today, or I'm just feeling nostalgic, probably both. But I thought it would be fun to look back on some Mario cartoons, specifically the meme-filled world of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, a wonderful combination of animation, live action, and of course, PSAs. Did you know that you have rights just like grown-ups? <sighs> They just don't make them like they used to. Anyway, as a massive Mario fan, my love for the series goes beyond the games, and I have some fond memories of this show. While the show is older than I am, thanks to the internet holding them up for the world to see, I have been very well acquainted with this show throughout my life. So for today, let's take a look back at how wacky and weird this super show really was. From the fun and goofy live action segments that would feature guest appearances, to the animated Mario show segments, and of course, some of the bonuses that came along along with the show, like the Legend of Zelda cartoon. Yeah, this is the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Well, in that case... The show only ran for a handful of months in the later part of 1989, but packed together a bunch of fun content while it was on, just being the start of Deke Entertainment's involvement in Mario content. Yes, this is pronounced Deke, you weirdo. The show would premiere Monday through Friday, being this every weekday program that would give us first and foremost an introduction to the show through live action with a live studio audience, as Mario, played by Wrestling Hall of Famer Lou Albano, and Luigi, played by Danny Wells, as they spend time in their basement workshop in Brooklyn, New York, where they do their regular plumbing work, or just goof around, especially when a special guest would come out for the day and partake in some shenanigans. Obviously, right around this time in history, Mario was a hot franchise, taking the world by storm with the original 1985 Super Mario Bros. game, really helping shift the course of what Mario is and will be known for, having both Super Mario Bros. 2 and 3 coming out in the same year in 1988. And did you know that Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually, with a plethora of other games that the characters were in, or from his playable origins with Donkey Kong, the animation space was already in full swing of taking Mario to other mediums outside of gaming. And while I could make a video discussing the long history of that, you know, Mario in animation, which I may do at a later point anyway, it was really the Super Mario Bros. Super Show that left this long-lasting impact for the generation of gamers it was on TV for, and for every other generation of kids since to discover and realize, man, the 80s sure was weird in an endearing way. But how did this come to be? What drove this decision for Nintendo to allow Deke to make a production out of this and play around in their toy box of wonder that they were still just kind of building up at the time. Well, it was thanks to Andy Hayward, the at the time CEO of Deke who tried to make this happen over the course of a year, where then he was able to finally acquire the license from Nintendo. The Mario Bros is such a unique property. We had to do it in a different way. We wanted to do a cartoon, but also do a show that extended beyond the cartoon. But in saying that, it wasn't just the Mario IP that is the interesting part here, but the fact that it was going to be all about the greater Nintendo franchises, mixing them into this power hour of content that through the recognizable faces of the Mario Brothers would bring us other animated segments of stuff like Castlevania, Metroid, Double Dragon, The Legend of Zelda, and more. With that last one though, The Legend of Zelda, actually coming to fruition with Mario. It was all in the hope of brand awareness for Nintendo. They were big and popular by several metrics we can judge for back then, but still nowhere close to where or even what Nintendo is today. Also, just the thought of a Metroid show in this similar art style it sounds pretty freaking awesome, and I'm really sad that it doesn't exist. Stuff like Double Dragon would eventually come to be a thing, but on its own and separate from anything Mario, and it wouldn't be until half a decade later anyway. For now, it was just the Mario Bros. Super Show, with Zelda sometimes. <laughs> we'll be right back and boy am I Steve! Now back to our story. Watch this. The show was simple enough. We meet live action Mario and Luigi, we meet a guest star, which could range from people like actual athletes, people acting and portraying other famous people throughout history, and actors from various shows, of course. But you can't forget the great Obi-Wan Cannoli. Yeah, how could you not want to watch this show? These live action segments would be the bookends of the show, covering the opening and the outro. It would be pretty funny seeing these moments accompanied by a live studio audience, and it was just this small little goofball 
small affair for only a handful of minutes at a time. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Ah, yes, the PSA, public service announcements. Public service announcements were also a thing since World War II was starting, but of course developed into more than just a regular announcement for news. Now having the 80s filled with anti-drug PSAs specifically. Nowadays, the only PSAs people really care about are these Pokemon cards. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to flex on you so hard right there. But come on, Captain Lou telling you that drugs are bad while wearing the Mario hat? Yes, this is what I need to keep me going right now. Leave them alone. You wouldn't want to be wrong. Okay, that's just fantastic. These are great and I don't know why I love them so much. Okay, just one more. Know your rights and use them. Please. Okay, let's now take a look at the cartoon side of things, where we get the introduction of the Mario rap, also known as the plumber rap, an incredibly 80s rap song that is so powerful and nostalgic, it was used to advertise the new Super Mario Bros. movie. Heck, it may even be in the movie. I haven't seen it yet as I'm making this video. There's also Do the Mario that plays at the end for the credits, and that's pretty great too. But with the show itself, we get some wacky adventures in the Mushroom Kingdom and beyond. Mostly beyond. With Mario Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad. They would all just be getting themselves into various circumstances that often cause Mario to spout off about Italian food. Power. We'd like three orders of free spaghetti to go! Ravioli, macaroni, tortellini, more desirable than pepperoni, my ravioli! To be fair, they make plenty of references to Italian food in the live action stuff as well, so it's great that they all kind of feel cohesive here. These animated moments would be parodies for the most part, following along different popular movies at the time, just adding in their own Mario flair. We would also get to see a bunch of bad guys with Bowser, sorry, King Koopa, and his henchmen always causing some sort of issues, with King Koopa really getting into the spirit of all these themes. So with all that being said, there is really no cohesive story here. It's these characters getting into situations that follow the plots and themes of other popular things until the next episode where it would be completely different. Things were pretty random and inconsistent, but never in the way of trying to do that on purpose. It always went for fun first, logic second. While it's now old itself, it feels like a throwback to animation before its time. Just being a silly cartoon that leaves you entertained. Trust me, if you expect more than that and you go back and watch these, you're not really gonna get much out of it. And if I'm being honest, when I look back at this show, the animated segments are not even my favorite part. The live action bits are because I feel more nostalgic towards them for some reason. But I still do love the animation. It feels like they had to make it for cheap and had to rush production with constant and errors that can be found, and it not being the highest of quality out there in comparison to, well, most things. But I don't know what to tell you. there's some charm to that. All the stories being these parodies were directly from Andy's decision since pulling from the games themselves was like trying to find a deeper meaning from a learning ABC's book. There really wasn't much there. Well sure, he could just be saving the princess from King Koopa, but they wanted to give it some flavor, some different spice, and this is really hit or miss for a lot of people. But then why did it feel so cheap? All of it, in general general, from the live action to the cartoon bits. Why? I think it really boils down to how to profit from this show and pay Nintendo their portion. For Deke to be able to acquire these licenses I mentioned, Nintendo demanded extensive royalties, so the cheaper and quicker they could make the production, the more money that came in could be split better to both Deke and those working on the show, and then Nintendo. Lou and Danny would be working on this show six out of the seven days in a week, hopping back and forth between the live action set to record those segments than having to drive to a different location to record their voices for the cartoon. It was made and produced fast on all fronts, but the show was a hit becoming a big enough hit with viewers that it quickly was syndicated and earned wide appeal. So much so that celebrities and athletes themselves would reach out to be in the live action segments on their own, since their kids would be fans of Mario in general, and what would be cooler than seeing your parents on the show with live action Mario and Luigi? <laughs> Probably plenty of things, but you'll just go with it, okay? On the other hand, a lot of critics at the time panned the show, slamming it as a disappointment or just being bad in general, with even more modern outlets looking back on it and claiming it to be awful, or as IGN once put it, the biggest offender among Nintendo's many embarrassing moments. But don't be worried, the reviewer still said that the animated segments were interesting to look back on, so that counts for something, right? They also gave it a 7 out of 10. I don't know anymore. I'm just as confused as you. The series itself isn't as great as it could have been, sure. The production feels rushed, I am sure plenty working on the show felt overworked, and you may even look back on the show as mostly cringe with a nostalgic center that may be worth the bite, but not the whole
whole meal. And yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I see the charm, I feel the charm, but it's so stuck in the 80s that trying to expect more from it feels like bullying. The jokes don't really land. Most of them are about pasta, so they just make me hungry, but at least I have a smile on my face while I'm watching. It serves as this time capsule for animation on TV, as well as experimental TV. It's weird, and if you know me and know this channel, I love weird. It's a term of endearment for the most part, and I do enjoy looking back at this show. So what else was there to round out this show? I feel like there's something so green and legend-filled that I haven't really mentioned too much about yet. Oh, that's right, that once a week special segment in the show, The Legend of Zelda. Yeah, how about showing us some scenes from the next Legend of Zelda? Stay tuned, don't go away. We'll be back. Hey, Zoltan, wake up! You're gonna miss the show! Yup, I have to cover this since it's technically a part of the show. Every week, Monday through Thursday, we would get the Mario animation segments being the filling of the show with a bonus teaser of the upcoming animation of The Legend of Zelda that would take up the Friday slot instead of the animation for the Mario Brothers. The Legend of Zelda cartoon is a wild example of, hey, it's the 80s, and it sure was a show. And if that statement makes you upset, well, well excuse me, princess. princess. Have you seen this cartoon? We all just have to embrace it for what it was. We follow Link, who yes, has a voice here in the series, as well as Princess Zelda, where they must defend Hyrule from Ganon, as he wants to rule and conquer the land. Shocker. You know, maybe kidnap Zelda along the way? What he really wants all along is to get Link's Triforce of Wisdom piece, as Ganon has the Triforce of Power piece, and I have the Triforce of Courage piece, because I'm so brave for making it through this show. I love how Link is shown to be in this series, though, compared to being this silent protagonist we play as in the games, you know, really being and feeling like you're this tough warrior and nothing can stop you and nothing really bothers you at all. But here in the cartoon, Link is the most sarcastic, all about himself person there is. To help Zelda, it's kind of like a chore for him. He has a fleshed out personality of this slacker type that somehow still gets things done. And to me, th that's funny. He just wants kisses from the princess, maybe a little too much, but at the same time is annoyed by her. They're constantly bickering about whatever, but somehow he's still in love with her. And Zelda is a tough character who can take care of herself until she can't, requiring Link's help a lot of the time, but refuses to always just be this damsel in distress. It's so wild as the show had full range to go in whatever direction they wanted, with references and dialogue based on characters or catchphrases from other media or comedians that the writers just really liked and took a lot of influence from. Whatever the case may be though, after a few months of the Super Show existing, it went away thanks to Nintendo not really having an interest in seeing that version of what the show was continue. So yes, this show, after one season, after only a couple months, was cancelled. But that doesn't mean the partnership between the two companies was over. Deke and Nintendo would still produce some further Mario content together, other forms of programs like Club Mario. But as far as the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, that's really it. It was a combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell that served you some fun bits of live action and some fun bits of colorful cartoon adventures, all with some incredible theme music sprinkled on top for good measure. There are plenty of other Mario only specific animation that maybe we should talk about at some point on the channel, as this was just one instance of it found within this show, but it really works here in the context of working in tandem with the live action bits, having the voices of Lou and Danny carry over between both. It's silly, it's goofy, and it was a lot of fun fully trying to dive back into it all before going to see the newest iteration of the Mario Bros in animation, so please let me know your thoughts on the Super Mario Bros Super Show in the comments down below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you meme on it? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.